This is Adam King from Aliens Don't Ring Doorbells, and you're listening to Madness to Creation. Go ahead, say it. Welcome to the Madness to Creation podcast, your self-care and music merge. This is Maddie. How are you? Here I have with me is the awesome and legendary Elias Soriano of Nonpoint. Elias, how are you doing? Good, good, good. I'm legendary. All right. I like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So um, you have... Um, one thing about Nonpoint is that you guys just keep going and um, it's like just with now with the record label and stuff like that. And I've been watching a couple of the documentaries and it is so intriguing, like what a band goes through, like whether it's with different record labels or throughout their music career, and then they develop their own. Um, what have you learned the most about this uh, 361 uh, degrees uh, record label so far? And, um, and I just got to say a huge congratulations on that development in your life. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's been a pretty fun process, uh, learning all the ins and outs that, you know, I didn't pick up in the past 20 years uh, of doing it. Um, getting a good team around you is, is a a very, uh, big priority on the list of, of things. If, if, like you said, if you're looking to, to do it yourself, um, for, for my band i i feel like uh it works for us and and um we were we were ready to do it we were very ready to do it mm-hmm. so uh, we're we're blessed to have the fan base that we do we're blessed to be able to still write uh music that people enjoy to uh to share and and play uh so we're we we got lucky we got lucky Absolutely. I was, I was going to say successful and luck. Um, to me, success is divine as hard work meets luck and stuff like that. Do you believe in that quote? Oh, absolutely. Timing and, and hard work, it, it all pays off. But if you put in the hard work, you'll, the, the timing definitely comes. You raise the, the uh, chances of you doing something and doing it successful if you're educated enough about it and ready enough. So I, I'd say get educated about the business and, and get educated the most on yourself. You know, it's really about what you do and how you present it and, and how you can really put that on 10 so people can can get it all day, every day. Yeah, absolutely. And um, kind of one thing that the media shows is like the glitz and glamour in the music industry. And it's far from that. Um, like throughout your career, what are some like things that were, were kind of like some awesome things that you learned and a few soul crushing things that you learned about the music industry? Um, it. It's it's awesome regardless of of the dips. I think uh, I think when it becomes your job, it, it, you know you you fall into that same headspace. You begin that mm-hmm. in that same headspace where it's work work work. So uh, I can't love it because it's work. You know it has to be. You know you don't. Nobody loves their job, right? Not true. You can love your job and still have those kind of you know moments in in you know, your career where things dip and they're a little bit harder. So you have to work a little bit harder or, uh, you know, uh, opinions may not sway your way. So it hurts a little bit uh, on a, uh, a deeper level. So what, what you, you got to do is, is hopefully do what I do is feel blessed and, and know that I, that's where I'm lucky mm-hmm. that I, I worked hard enough, but I'm lucky that I get to wake up every morning and do what I love to do. So I don't want to take that uh, too much for granted. And if I can then attach a good work ethic on top of that, then I'm just going to better my chances at success and longevity. And, you know, that's what I attest our longevity and our success to it is our work ethic. Plus, uh, you know, on top of that, us, us being uh, uh, lucky. Yeah. How did you, how did you develop that work ethic? Was it, was it something that was ingrained in you from your childhood or, or did you just develop that over time? Uh, personally? Yeah. I, 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 I give that to my parents, you know, definitely. Uh, because when I, I left the nest and I went into the workforce, I, I, I moved up relatively quickly uh, and then got to where I was with the band. When the band got me, I was a general manager for an air duct cleaning company running 29 offices, you know, across the country. Man. So I, I, my, my mind definitely works uh, in that way where I can administratively uh, spin a lot of plates. Uh, but at the same time too, I, I did 
music and theater and stuff like that in school. So uh, the creative side of my brain uh, definitely likes to turn its wheels and, and churn often. So because I can't shut that off, that's why my life led towards more of the creative side of music than the administrative side of music. Um, now that I'm 20 years into my career uh, and seeing the understanding and, and having basically being a test model for my own uh, uh, label is that now that I'm where I am, I, I, I feel like uh, the administrative side can work with the creative side now and, and really make things bang up. What's the most challenging part about the administrative side that you find? Um, working through the channels and working in the back end of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of uh, a lot of connections and a lot of contacts and having those things. So realizing that that's where you really end up spending uh, your dollars is getting to those, you know, wow, this is really what happens back here, man. This is great. Y'all didn't tell me this was, oh shit, I don't look behind that curtain. All right. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing where you realize, you know, that there is, there is a whole nother side to even the, um, even the small administrative side that we all think we know mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's a deeper, deeper side to it. And that's been an interesting, um, uh, hurdle. Mm. So, so what are some, what are a couple of things you want to still pick up on in the industry as you're learning this process with having your own label and all that stuff? Uh, I think I want to get deeper relationships with people on the back end because, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, strategy conversations and a lot of concept conversations with, with people that are in my peer group. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of, freaking goes over everybody's head in, in that sense. Um, not even goes over everybody's head, but they, they, they're, it's that same thing where they, their, their minds and hearts don't want to even deal with that kind of thing, where mm -hmm. I, I want to try to bounce ideas and concepts off of people that have been doing it professionally for years. And, um, you know, say, well, we've tried that in this kind of way, and this is how it worked. And me being able to look at that, you know, I feel like, and, and I, I think my team will uh, attest for this, my passion is being able to look at something and find, um, you know, find a way to put a supercharger on it and, nice. and really gas it up um, to, to, you know, trim the edges and, and, and you know, turn turn you know a regular stock car into a race car that's that's my where i feel like my my passion is and i can look at something and 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 i like to be part of think tanks and groups of people that and uh that you know work real ideas and look at numbers and you know just don't just throw around a bunch of ideas that's that's what really excites me and that's that's what i really hope that i gain out of out of this side because i think it's gonna it's gonna help the label run better which means I'm going to be able to get my stuff to the audience uh, better and reach my audience uh, easier. And that's, that's always a big plus. Yeah. Are you just looking in, into like the rock and metal genre or are you going to be like branching out into like uh, pop or hip hop or, or any other genres? I think I'm a, if anyone knows me, if anybody, anyone that really knows me knows that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, I'm definitely a pop kid. I grew up a pop kid and I grew up a hip hop kid. So that's, that's where um that's where I get to still uh, enjoy the music. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I'm not so critical of it in when it's not my genre. And when it comes to rock, I really came up on um, a, a lot of the big voices, you know, the Steve Perry's and, you know, the journeys and the, 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 uh, the bad companies and the Boston's and, you know, Fleetwood Max and all Fleetwood. I love, you know, uh, all those really big heart, you know, hearing, hearing that in the house when I was a kid, uh, really gave me a, a, um, a true North of what I felt like good music was. And when I weigh that against things, um, you know, there's some really amazing standouts in rock, 
you know, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you got your death tones and, you know, your circus, your circus survives and, and bands that, you know, push the envelope on songwriting and, and, um, and really, uh, make a, a, a draw a picture out of, out of their song. And, you know, pop music surprisingly does that very well. And you can't, I'm the kind of guy who's a sucker for a good song. I'm just, if it's a good song, I just like the song. I, I, I hold no, no, uh, uh, I, I don't hold that kind of uh, uh, enjoyment of my life that precious. I let it kind of just run in the meadow. You know what I'm <laughs> Absolutely. saying? That, Absolutely. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, so pop and, and, and hip hop, if you look through my, my playlist, those are the kind of things that I really, you know, get my head bobbing and get me to dance. Yeah, and a couple of songs I've been jamming out to lately. Higher Power by Coldplay. For some reason, I love that song. It has an 80 synth wave vibe to it. What is it like a couple of songs that you're jamming to right now? That well, you know, it's funny you touch on Coldplay. Coldplay, I feel like, and again, it's, it's you know, just me loving music and, and liking, uh, me wanting to be a student of the actual art. Coldplay has a an amazing talent. They have that Bob Marley ability of taking very simple words and making them extremely poetic and, and dropping mm -hmm. a sediment and emotion into music that, that is uh, 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 something that you should pay attention to. Absolutely. So there, you know, there's, there's lots of bands, you know, uh, that, that do that, but Coldplay is, is definitely uh, one of those ones um, that does that. So good, good, good reference there. What was the question again? I'm sorry. Oh, just tell me, no worries. Just tell me a couple of like artists or bands that you've been jamming to as of late. As of late, uh, I, I like uh, Born of Osiris just got dropped in my lap. Um, amazing, uh, I guess you would call prog rock uh, mm -hmm. band out of, out of Chicago. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, I'm really big into Hyro the Hero. Um, I feel like those guys are live. Um, they really come with it. And there's something to be said about um, uh, the full package. So, so I, I really like um, uh, those guys too. Uh, Gojira is one that I, I just find myself playing more and more and more. Uh, a lot of rock bands, actually. I talk about it. I'm not in a <laughs> fucking rock bands. I've been playing a lot of rock bands lately. Now that I think about it. Um, uh, yeah, those, those, uh, those are ones that I've been jamming. Um, I've been, uh, uh, I really, I, I literally get a daily dose of Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic, um, Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. I don't know if you know that. That I'll have to check that song out. Yeah, it's Definitely called Leave the Door Open. It reminds, it's, you know, it, it reminds me of Earth, Wind and Fire Ooh. and those Commodores, that whole time. And Taking Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. Anderson Pack is one of my favorites. Bruno Mars, just really good, amazing voices. You put them together, you may I think they're the baddest super group ever. Like honestly, they're incredible. You got to check out that song. It's I like, definitely will. It is if you like Earth, Wind, and Fire. If you like that seven, you know that 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 old uh, uh, '70s sound, um, go check them out. Uh, re really good, uh, really good, good a uh, uh, band. Yeah, speaking of Anderson <laughs> Pack, um, I saw. It sometimes I see these random videos. There was this 19 year old girl that um, she was jamming on, jamming on uh, random things with her drums and stuff like hitting like a couch and all that stuff. Did you see Anderson pack uh, hooked her up with the drum set? Did you see that video? No. Yeah. She was this uh, poor girl from Chicago, hardly had any money, 19 years old and caught the attention of Anderson pack. And he bought her a drum set. That's, that's what I'm see. Yeah. That's why I like Anderson Pack. See, I gravitate I mean, towards pe people that are just, I, I feel like that are just good people. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that he did something like that. Man, that's great. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what are like, naturally you've uh, released, before we get into Ruthless, you've released songs about front lines. And something that we've talked about lately is 22 per day on the podcast. Um, talk about veteran suicide and all that stuff. And we also talk about suicide prevention. I volunteer for suicide prevention. I had a student who lost their brother to suicide a couple years ago. And from that moment on, I've just been trying to go full throttle and to just being an advocate for mental health. And um, what are some things that you advocate for and, and all that? Like, uh, you know, I, my, 
my family and my my whole life kind of I, I try to live the kind of example that I hope um, you know shows what I believe in. Um, pushing my beliefs on people, having the platform that I have, I've noticed is is very seldom welcomed. So I tread very lightly, though I shouldn't and shouldn't. I believe that I shouldn't have to tread lightly. I wish I could just blur it everything that I believe and mm -hmm. uh, with no consequence. But uh, it is at the end of the day, my opinion. Uh, so what I've learned in my life coming up is that, and even just recently, especially through the pandemic, I got a little bold and you know spoke my 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 voice, and and it again it, it seemed to uh, not be as welcome, and it was it was kind of sad. It was really sad. Yeah. So what I do is I I kind of find the moments where I can actually really make a serious change. So if I'm in a, in a particular situation where um, you know, I'm met with something like racism or something like that. Uh, you know, I'm finding myself actually being bold enough to go, hey man, is everything okay? You know, and, and it's funny because, uh, cause you know, this is something that Gary V uh, actually said, it's, it's, you know, when you're giving someone like that, that kind of level of compassion, they can't help but pause for a second. It, it disarms a person, doesn't it? A little bit. And, and then, you know, it's having something to say. Mm -hmm. And I make sure that I do have something to say. Um, but I don't put me, my family, my daughter, uh, my, my livelihood in danger because uh, that would just, that would that would be just me not being mindful, and mm -hmm. and um, I want to be smart about you know my safety, and mm -hmm. right now things are really not as safe as they kind of used to be in a sense, yeah. and you never right. know uh, when you know a, you know card carrying uh, you know gun toting somebody's going to be in front of you and you say, Hey man, is everything okay? And they're just having a bad day on the end and boom, then all of a sudden, you know, I can't walk my daughter down the aisle. So, um, you know, I feel like moments like this allow for change to happen because I feel like somebody would be listening to this and I'm choosing right now to make my kind of opinion known mm -hmm. without, you know, trying to, uh, uh, judge anyone else on their opinion people just grow up different mm -hmm. and people are starting to realize more and more that hey maybe maybe uh maybe what mom and dad were teaching me wasn't wasn't really what i should have been learning and maybe they weren't the best example maybe some of their opinions and belief and just maybe uh, mom and dad aren't always right mm -hmm. and you got to look at those moments in your life where hey then maybe they weren't so right about this and look how i turned out maybe they weren't right about this as well, because look at all these people that are hurting because of this particular belief, you know? So it's, it's that kind of thing where I, I just, I, I, I pick my moments and I just try to live by example. You, you know, that I, I wish more people would do that, to be honest with you. Um, I think it would get our message out so much more, whatever that message may be for you or for me or anything like that. And um, I think it'll create the environment for people to be able to be open about how they feel, you know, especially veterans. My brother suffers like horribly, horribly, horribly from uh, being in the service from mental illness. Um, uh, he suffers with alcoholism. Uh, it's, it's a constant battle for him. And, you know, the more and more he talks about it and, and people, people in the military who have been in the military who did uh, serve tours overseas, mm -hmm. if, if you know, it, it, they don't like to talk about it. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we learn is you can't heal without talking about it. But wanting to talk about some of the things that they went 
through is is almost like wrong to ask them mm -hmm. to do. So there's there's got to be that process of of time that they 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 get to get to there, and that process would happen a lot faster if we gave people with mental illness the environment that. Mm -hmm. that was the extreme just being sad instead of gun violence in school or the opiate crisis or you know uh, uh the the fight between republican and democrat uh overseas bullshit all this other stuff that we're constantly you know putting ahead of homelessness world hunger uh, uh, our military coming home and not being the fact that they're just like, Hey, thanks for your service. Now just go in and hopefully you can, you know, readjust to normal life. That, that it, it just, it makes me just deeply sad. So, you know, again, I, 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 I try to pick my moments, but make sure that I, I lead by example. I, I always stop always stop military personnel. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much for your service. Shake their hand if I can, elbow if I can't, you know, it, it, because of w what they do, because my brother is, is constantly going through, through uh, things that, you know, pull him in, in so many different directions. You know, he, mm -hmm. he got into the service, uh, you know, when he was 18, uh, did security for President Clinton in, in the Secret Service when he came wow. out. And he was, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a proud American Democrat and the seeing what happened on the Capitol and seeing everything that's been going down, mm -hmm. just, just destroyed my brother. So it, you know, to see him already dealing with what he dealt with and then having to come home and deal with the pettiness that's, that's happening here. And, and having to having already fought for it and mm -hmm. still continuing to do it because he's also he continues to he's a bomb appraisal officer. So he's also keeping people from putting things on planes that could hurt us, you know, like wow. that kind of thing where he's like top level, you know, and 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 to still see him struggling with with certain things and and, you know, us taking just our little opinion and putting that ahead of it and on top of it really makes makes for a very surreal world to be living in. And mm -hmm. and I'm that type of motherfucker that just kind of like I I refuse to let it kind of crack the shell that I've put up mm -hmm. because the shell that I've put up has me here. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be a very aggressive, very angry person. I'm kind of like tapering off of that and just getting trying to get educated enough to to step away from that so i can do more help than harm you know i i agree 100 percent. and and to me when we do that <clears throat> we establish credibility to that other person and or to a group of people and stuff like that and um it do you think it's all because um like first of all what did you learn about yourself through this pandemic and um like what is one thing that you've realized about yourself that you didn't realize before when we were all quarantined, shut down and all that stuff? Uh, that our lives have a lot more damage from our growing up than we really know mm -hmm. that a lot of the things that you guys, that if anyone's listening right now and you're going through something, it is definitely stemmed from your training you have been trained in a certain kind of way to just hey like bro it just just you know and this is just your personality is who you are and that's the the pandemic definitely taught me that is that who i was as a kid definitely affected my decision making as an adult and some of that training that I got as a child wasn't good training. That's why kids are smarter now. That's why they're not so uh, quote unquote well behaved. It's because they're already past all the bullshit. You know, millennials get a lot of shit 
and <laughs> you know mean? you know newer newer generations get a lot of shit it's because they're us already because mm-hmm. we we as parents that we're parents now we didn't hide that shit from our kids we let them know nah that's bullshit you'll learn when you get older and our parents really did give that to, like kind of open book to us where millennials kind of got that from you know the gen xers and even some of the baby boomers where we kind of got a little peek behind the curtain so you know to no fault of their own they're like hey man i'm not just i'm just not going to deal with that and they just mm-hmm. don't they got smart they learn technology faster they get educated on things faster so you know we're doing a good job as parents and you know as parents now we need to look at our kids look at what they're doing that's the new hotness take the old busted out toss it aside and start (laughs) banging on that top level and you know communing with the older and the younger to make you know the decision makers as smart as we can so we could start fixing shit like you know, dumb shit. Like, you know, let's get renewable energy going. Let's get, you know, uh, wartime down and peacetime up, you know, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's start Mm -hmm. using, you know, all this stuff. Like, why can't you adults just fucking fix it? Hey, let's just fix it. It can fix if we just start getting out of that old bad training and getting into the new. Yeah, definitely. And kind of one thing I learned about myself is uh, just uh, that need to reflect more on life and all that stuff and just slowing down because, part of me is kind of scared of going back to like the way things were like when we're rushing around doing a million things a day and stuff, you know, and, and just trying to find that balance. And um, like you brought up your family and all that. And first of all, my heart goes out to your brother and all that. And um, like, what is uh, one thing that makes you uh, most proud of your daughter? Oh, did I word that correctly? I'm sorry. My daughter, my daughter, I'm, (laughs) I'm most proud at, at, at her heart and her her developed way of thinking mm-hmm. she's she she literally walks around the world dropping little flowers of happiness into people's lap without them knowing that it's coming my wow. daughter compliments more people than i've ever seen in my life my daughter introduces herself to more people than i've ever seen in my life she is kind caring and um joyful and uh, you know me and my wife worked really hard to kind of to to make sure that that stayed you know even to her own detriment sometimes um you know she was bullied a little bit at school because she's so sweet because she's so kind you know it's it's a it's a predator prey kind of world out there so mm-hmm. um you know uh that's one thing that Unfortunately for me, and you know, being a hot-blooded uh, Latin father, uh, you know, I definitely find myself two seconds away from grabbing the keys, driving down to the school, and beating up a little nine-year-old kid. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not gonna lie. That's that's where the daddy bear comes out, and I have to, you know, woosa and bring it in and center myself, and just realize that that's gonna toughen her up in a way that's going to allow her to go out into the world and, um, you know, be able to live in that kind of world because it's not getting any nicer. It really is. It definitely isn't. And the more, and the more we try to make it nicer, the more it seems like people want to keep it mean. So, Mm -hmm. um, we are noticing ourselves kind of like prepping her for that, which makes me kind of sad on the inside. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, Th- that's where, where, um, you know, you wish you lived in the bubble. Uh, so her heart is, is, is one of my favorite things about my daughter, her mind. Uh, she, she is, my daughter is, she's nine years old when, when my daughter was, uh, in kindergarten, she learned all 50 presidents and we thought it was, we thought it was cool that school was teaching my daughter all the presidents uh and then uh not 50 presidents i'm sorry it was at the time it was it was 44 uh 45 but they she they come to find out my daughter learned them on her own uh on the internet watching youtube videos because she thought it was fun she learned i i just as a joke 
I, I sent her this, I showed her this uh, viral video of this guy wrapping all of the presents. So then she learned them in order, then got interested in the presidents on her own and got interested in history and then started to dive deeper into them and would tell us things like, you know, hey, do you know that Jefferson was the first president that allowed women to vote or practice law? or that uh, Jackson was the first one to wear pants. And like, oh. like we the weirdest stuff ever my daughter had. Uh, and then we learned that she learned it on her own because we were at a uh, uh, daddy daughter dance situation. And my wife's like, hey, it's so great that you're teaching uh, our daughter the presidents. She learned them all. She goes, we didn't teach your daughter the presidents. She was like, are you kidding me? She was like, your daughter doesn't know all 50 presidents. We're like, oh yeah? Marley, come here. She called her over and she was like, give us all 50. And bang, she would spit them out. So um, she learns, like, she knows all the names of all the Japanese characters and all of her anime uh, cartoons that we let her watch. So she's learning Japanese and she's nine. It's like that kind of stuff where her That's brain- incredible. Her brain, I've realized her brain works the way a child's brain should work is you let them learn what they love and let them go nuts. Let them go nuts. She's showing interest in something. I let her go nuts on it. You know, I'm, I built a garden in the backyard. I thought it'd be great for her to be digging around. She's like, nah, I don't want a garden. I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool though. And, and to me, that just shows her the power of knowledge and all that stuff. And uh, um, so like, I know you brought up a uh, bully in schools someday and, or that she's going through, I mean, or she went through, I should say. And um, like kind of transitioning into the song Ruthless. Um, I actually heard it on AEW and I was like, I'm like, that was so awesome. And um, so specifically, did you write that song uh, specifically for the AEW pay-per-view or was it just kind of based upon all the turmoil that's been going on in the world lately? Um, it, 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 initially started with the invite to uh do something for AEW. uh then it just basically just built into what it it did and and we just decided that this is going to be the lead excuse me the lead track to the uh the ep uh i i i was happy at the reaction i knew it was going to have a reaction um I'm glad that it had the reaction that it's, it's having because uh, um, people are enjoying the song. And that's, 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 that's the number one goal for, for us. Absolutely. And um, I was going to say, I heard the song on Rock 108 like several times the past week. So they've been playing the song out of Iowa. So that's, that's, that's pretty, yeah, we, we've got, cool. a, we've, we've got more stations than we've, we've ever had this fast uh on a song in the 20 years of our career so um we know that it's 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 being welcomed to, we're, we're, like i said we feel really blessed and uh i i give credit to my team working very hard and you know setting the uh the song up for release properly and 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 setting up a really good launch pad we we worked really hard uh the year prior to you know get our our audience on board and engaged and now, um, you know, it's, it's showing. Yeah. Does it, does this mean a new album for Nonpoint or are you kind of going the route of like, where are you guys going to be releasing singles from time to time, given the world of streaming and Spotify and all that? Right now it's this, it's this EP. We have another one up on deck that we're, uh, currently in the process of, of writing and, and finishing up here. Uh, but Ruthless has a lot of steam and the next two songs I know are probably going to be songs that are bigger. Actually, I know that they're going to be songs that are bigger than Ruthless because the second one is one that the fans, fans voted for. So I know my fans are going to be extremely excited about it. So uh, that's really going to engage them. Um, but the, the third song is one that the camp internally feels like it's one of the, the greatest songs that we've, we've ever written. Absolutely. And what are you guys did a live stream a while back and we did an, a review on it and it was just an awesome live stream and all that. And um, was it kind of different performing in a, a live stream as opposed to in front of an audience? Like how different was it? It is. Uh, it was still you still felt the pressure of the eye on you because that camera was there and it's almost, you know, time is relative. 
So what you do now in the present ripples and it's going to be consumed, judged, enjoyed down the line. So you, you have to, uh, you have to put yourself there Absolutely. or else, or else you won't, you won't, um, you won't put on a good show. So when that camera was there, I definitely felt the weight of, of, uh, of our crowd there. So it was, it was nice. Um, but it was also really cool to be able to, to hear ourselves that clear and that amazing, uh, uh, because normally it's a lot of loud and a lot of screaming and a lot of, uh, symbol noise and 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 stuff we we really uh we really had a good time doing that that statement thing yeah that that was so much fun to watch and and i was rocking out to it of course and um Thanks. so absolutely so um kind of a question i usually ask uh, you for our listeners is um tell me about a time where a fan came up to you and said hey this thank you so much this song got me through or you know this song really resonated with me and What's your reaction and stuff like that when you hear those messages? Well, that's, I mean, if, if you're not writing music for your, for obviously your own personal uh, reasons, but if you're really not writing to connect with someone else, then it's kind of like tree falls in the woods, nobody there to hear it. You know, mm-hmm. being purposeful with your songwriting, it, I feel like should be your only goal. And to, to, to be validated and, and to feel purposeful is, is the only reason why I do it. Absolutely. And that is, I can't think of a better reason why to do that. And um, so um, you covered what's next for Nonpoint. Um, anything else that you would like to add? Like, cause I'm sure you got a very busy day and all that stuff. No, no, to- no, we're, we're good. Uh, I, I would say if, if you, if you l- love our band, if you enjoy our message, if you like our mission, the best way to support us is nonpointstore.com. Right now we have a pre-sale up for Ruthless. It has all brand new Ruthless merch. It is the best merch that we've put out. I'm not just saying that it is literally the best merch we've ever done. Uh, a lot of firsts that we've never had. We have slides. We have a seven inch uh, that has Ruthless on one side and the extended version of uh, the cover song that I was saying that our, our audience voted on. Uh, so it's it's really how we feed the machine and we take care of our team. And it is not cheap. So anywhere you can give is is appreciated and keeps the uh, the train going. Um, and even on a small scale, you can do that in a very free way. You know, you can go to nonpoint.com, pick your favorite streaming provider and get your daily dose of Ruthless. That sounds awesome. And, and we will definitely go to nonpointstore.com. And, and for the listeners, please go to nonpointstore.com and check out their music and all that. And Elias, it's always good to talk to you. And thank you so much for this awesome conversation, and everything like that. So thank, thank you so much, Maddie, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, be well and be safe. Indeed. All right. Later, bro. See ya.